boss and everyone else had umpire during the day, they should have to share the umpire. And uh, they'll be giving something back to the game just like everyone else is. But anyway, we'll move on to the match. Man, I'm going to get uh, Mick Scary to, to join me in commentary since Kev Harvey's gone walkabout. And then we might have a bloke that calls shots and gets them right. Half time. So Kurt gets first di first dig in. Uh, oh, that's a bad opener. Well, not opener, but bad shot midway. Now I don't know if he's actually even got a shot. He might have to just trickle him behind his red. Curtis on red, yeah. Yeah, and he's just. I think he's obviously gone a full ball contact that red, and he's just gone behind it. Unless he can actually get to the potting angle, as one near the middle, and chop it in. That's what he's looking at now. I'm not sure if you've um, mentioned this yet, but um, Dave has actually won the Australian 10 ball last week. So if he wins this uh, today, he's won two majors in um, two weeks, which is a huge effort. Yeah, he's in a fair purple patch at the moment, getting as far as he has. And uh, well, Kurt's played a pretty good recovery shot there. Don't. I've, actually, I can see this angle. He's just checking it. You can't see it on, on the screen, but I think this red will go to the middle past the yellows. And he should have a pretty good angle then on his last ball. Ideally, if he could actually land sort of near the bottom rail, maybe like an inch off the bottom rail, and be on that red, that would be perfect. You can just stun up centre table and then another stun off side cushion with black. So, looks all easy, but still got to be done. Danny's just come into the commentary box. Oh well, Kurt's decided to bang that in. He's under hit it though, Mick. <laughs> you know, I should mention this on Cubeville TV, but I'm gonna. Danny's has a Raspberry Cruiser, and you know how long the necks are on those things? Well, it disappeared for a few minutes. <laughs> Getting prepared for a honeymoon, obviously. <laughs> Lucky you, Valo. <laughs> Apparently it's not enough to just run tournaments these days. You've got to get all the luck. <laughs> anyway, back to the match. shot coming out here from Kurt and oh what a shot oh look at that he points at it with the Q does the Q thing and uh, he's probably a little bit unlucky there to be fair but I think he still might be able to uh, actually do a slight swerve and kick it in with a bit of side and then possibly play a cross double I'm going to tell you whether he can or not Mick Jamie just having up to take a look here actually I think he's on it yeah I don't want to get away because I'll be right in the line with his eye line What's his name? What's his name? Jesse Scanlon, my apologies for my comments about your mother earlier. But, I, I'm being honest though, what I said was true. <laughs> so, okay, so he wasn't quite on it and he has played the shot that you suggested, Mick, a little swerve. This is not the greatest opening shot you want to be presented when there's a red over the hole, but at least he's got a shot and he'll be happy with that. Yeah, Dave does have options, yeah. yeah he, if he's, he's, if he's not happy with the pot, team. yeah, exactly. He can get the white on the left-hand side cushion, which is what he's going to do. Very tough cross table with three yellows in the way of the natural path. He's hit it well. I don't know whether the white can go in between the black and the cushion here. No, I'm pretty sure it won't. And there's no path across table as well, so that's, that's a very, very good shot. Actually, when you look at it, he's actually in a lot of trouble now. If um, I was Kurt, I'd, I'd probably even try and send now a yellow over towards the red and black. Probably put it near in between 
Um, even put a yellow on the bottom nameplate. Even that. To the red. Even that's actually hard because the, the ball. You, you, you almost have to plant one because it, they're all in the way of each other to play that shot. So you might be yeah, maybe he's right. going to try and nestle in behind this yellow. He's pointing that with his cue, just restricting the one shot, making play. He doesn't really want to move the black now. He can push the black closer to the red, but the, the black is fine where it is right now. If he can get another yellow, or bait, make Dave waste his first shot. He's come behind the show. He's going to try and get out of this. Oh, beforehand. Oh, look at this shot. Super shot from Kurt Dunham. Wow. Fair and I'll tell you what, this is almost where he left it when he missed the red the first time, but I don't think this... He may have to double this to the corner or chop it up the top. Yeah, I'd, I'd say he'd be able to um, double this and just sort of screw off the black. If not, he might be able to um, cross-double it, but I don't think it'd be hard to see from here. I don't think he can put it in the middle. I think he's got to screw off too deep and the double kiss will be there. I'll be very, I'm thinking... Well, I can't tell what he's playing here. I'm right behind the shot, so I can't like tell what he's doing. Soft cross double. Oh wow, that's a great shot. Close. That's massive. I didn't, I actually didn't think that was on mix, so that's a really super shot. That. Well, yeah, he has to play it soft, obviously. To allow the white, to allow the white pass the black. But well, uh, that was a pretty good out there play. Uh, Kurt Dunham's just going absolutely stupid right now. That was. Welcome to your first frame in a final that you've first final that you've played, and I'll just play two ridiculous shots and go game. Don't think Ross that impressed by all that. So one nil Dunham, race to five. keep the wide on the table and hasn't it's so important in a final you must keep the wide on the table on the break now SA is getting all loud loud and proud like we're used to hearing them Red, Red's here Jamie yeah definitely mate so so many uh, there's so many more options if things go a bit pear shaped halfway through the out This is actually the key shot right now, Mick. It's, it's about yeah, he's got to get away from this yellow. Yep, he must do that, and he must leave himself on a ball where he's not going to like kill another red or land awkward. He might screw back off two cushions here. Yeah, I think he'll play for the other one. It's near, like it's just above it. It's, uh, not hard it's enough. It's about as good as he, good, good as he can get at the moment. I'll take that. <laughs> And uh, look, Mick, do you do you play the left hand of the two reds on the left bottom left, or do you play the outside one, just no, thinner play, chop? I play the one closer to the pocket. Or just let the other one get cannon to the bottom rail. Yeah. Yeah. The white's running too far. The problem um, I have with that shot is you might you actually might not be guaranteed to be on a ball if uh, one doesn't pass to the middle. So well, never mind. It's he's hit it perfect. <laughs> The other way, if you went the other way and took the other red first, the white's travelling too too much. So well, I actually thought the natural path wanted to cannon the uh, the red that's sort you of closer to the black yeah, spot. Yeah, you don't really want to move those reds. Those, those reds are ready to pot. If you start moving them, you might kill one. You might push one closer to a yellow. You, you really just want to pot and stun, pot and stun there, just or, or roll roll onto other balls. Yeah, this out's now all about him getting fairly close and fairly straight on that ball top end of the table and just so he can screw back to the black yeah, in the middle. That, that will be his last ball at, at the top of the table. Yeah, absolutely. Although, he actually might take it a bit earlier because if he doesn't screw back far enough, he could snooker himself. But <laughs> There's a couple of ways you can go about this. Well, I think he just stuns this in the middle, plays the ball over the hole puts the other one in the middle and then runs through and gets as straight as he can or even off straight so he's stunning off a side rail which is a much easier shot to play. He lifted a bit there and he hasn't got off a shot so doesn't matter though.
You can almost tell by players' reactions whether they're on a ball straight away or not, or whether they're happy with the shot. You, you just look straight at your opponent. Yeah, and Kurt. If they're sawing, you know, you're pretty much you're happy with you're happy with the result yourself. But yeah, Kurt does the old tip on the table, lift the butt of the cue. I do yeah, believe. Everyone's got their little trademarks. Yeah, this looks pretty perfect. He's right behind this. And, uh, the only thing the only thing he's even going to care about here is running through enough where the yellow that's underneath it isn't hampering his queuing, and that's why you just see him checking his hand in there. Just doesn't, doesn't want to kick now. Just wants to <laughs> roll, roll forward about a foot. Don't want to over overrun this either. Although even if he does, he just stuns for the other pocket, so it's not that big a deal. But oh wait, he did have a little bit of angle. So this is going to be a little, a little bit longer this pot than I thought. He's actually drifting now towards the centre pocket here as he screws back. So, and I think that's why he's decided he's going to stun before <laughs> it. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't go in off at all. I think he would have liked the white to be uh, a few more inches forward yeah definitely would have liked to have uh, just screwed straight back this is actually missable this pot this will come close to the center yeah I think I think he'll land where he actually put his cue though I think he'll be all right yeah I knew that was wow. missable he, he j sort of jabbed at that and there was a lot of body movement there I think he decided last minute you know what well, I'm just gonna get right down the table for this rather than playing where he initially put his tip I mean, that was the first signs of um, nerves, I think, from, from Dave. Yep. Played well in the semis and the quarters. He's, he's actually been playing well all day. But, um, I mean, he's, he's no beginner to this, this sort of pressure. He, he's won a lot of a lot of finals. Right, yeah. I mean, everyone misses, and that's the, that's the thing. But if okay. you do look back at that one shot, he, he did move his body a lot. He sort of went forward with the cue, and as soon as you start doing that, it's it's too hard to pot those. Kurt's just decided, I'm not going to go for the pot out. I'm going to actually play a snooker. And I'm not sure if that was the correct option. He's Kurt possibly should have took his time a little bit more then and made sure of a better snooker. Yeah, because this, this is very... This is not good. Even if, even if Roffle hits the red, it's Kurt's... In, Pretty much in trouble. Has well, to he'll play another another the snooker. Yeah, I mean he'll have the yellow that the white balls near now to just flick off and get another snooker, but still, these balls aren't that bad. Yeah, I don't know whether the cannon's on with the two yellows near the black, straight in the centre. Yeah, I don't think it is, but so yeah. it don't look that hard to develop though. That's the thing. Well, he's missed that. I was going to say these, these tables are sliding a lot. Come on, well, we're going to find if this plant's on now or not, because if it is, it'll be banging it straight in. Just have and a look at it. Even if it's not, you play it. You just use two. No, I'd, I'd probably play another shot. I don't see an issue with just promoting this, even if it's not on. And then the, the out's so simple. There you go, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Look at that, it's a giant ring of rosy around the black. <laughs> <laughs> now this is just a practice session now. Which one's is going to be his last ball, Mick? I'll say the bottom left one. I say the middle right. So now he's it will be now. <laughs> I thought he might stun and hold that one for the other ball, then stun across for the one he's about to play now, and then he's just got to clean up the bottom bottom stuff. But a lot of ways you could have, could have made this out. And of course, he went the way that I said it wasn't. Because <laughs> that's just how they roll. Kurt must be feeling really good right now. About to go two love up in a, in a major grand final. Yep, and a nice stun shot here for Black in the other middle. And this is what he did at the Nationals too. Pretty much the whole two weeks played exactly like this. Played so well. He did. And uh, really helped Victoria to the win. Their yeah. third win in a row. He was definitely our best player. Even though Mark Robinson did win the Australian title, I think in the team's event, Kurt was our best player. Played in one of the hardest positions to play as well, at number one, leading out. Oh, 
off. You can see you can see the attitude right now at, at two, at both players. So you don't even have to look at the scoreboard. You can see one guy slouched down, you know, looking at the floor, rubbing his head. The other guy is standing up, happy, smiling, and you know, even if you're down, you want to. You want to stand up and, and show your opponent that you're ready to get back out there, you know, and kick some butt. If you're yeah. sitting slouched down in, in, in your chair, it really, you know, um, doesn't really do anything to your opponent. Your opponent actually feels better. Yeah, I generally agree with that, but I think Roth could be 4 nil up right now and he still looks like he wants to slit his wrist, so... <laughs> doesn't show hardly any emotion at all, except we did see a bit of emotion from after he won his semi-final match. But, uh, Especially when you're travelling from interstate too, you know, it is a long way to come. Definitely. Well, he's already paid for his trip and more. We'll guarantee, what is it for a second if he happens to get second? At, uh, 1500 is it? Yes, yeah, something. 1000 or something. Think about roughly around 1500, second, 3000 first. Make it easy. That's a super shot from Kurt. He is on and out straight away. Yeah. Kev. Kev Harvey, the reason Kev Harvey is not commentating is he's just ordered seven babies and he's about to devour <laughs> all of them. <laughs> He's ordered the seafood platter, I'm telling you now, it's bigger than Jake McCartney's head, so that'll give you an idea of how much food's on that place. And once again, Kurt's, um, Kurt's back in the balls, looking good again. Yeah, he's just flying, isn't he? He's killing absolutely perfect at the moment. Definitely will take this ball in the middle next, because it's uh, just a... Obviously it's on, but it's just a problem ball if you don't land where you are now. You want to be careful too. When you when you're cruising like this, you can you can rush, start to rush things, and um, you know you you don't want to stuff it out up like this because it could bring your opponent back into the game, and you could even possibly lose a match. So you want to make sure, still take your time, take your 30 seconds, you know, don't rush. These easy outs get chopped up a lot, so just take your time. So you see, once again, I would actually be playing the other ball on the left hand side here. Just stun it in, and then you just. Yeah, well, he hasn't walked around. Now he's walked around and seen that option, so he'll probably take the ball on the left. Yeah, well, actually, thought he saw it earlier, yeah. and he was just taking his time to make sure he knew what angle he wanted, but yeah, you're right, he's and worked that's it out now. So, just take your time, walk around the table. Well, he's run through. Yeah, that's that's a good shot. perfect. Now it's uh, pretty much, he just needs to come back a couple of inches and then roll, roll the one in the centre. Yep, black in the corner. Black in the corner. And that's the difference between rushing his shots and walking around. He walked around the table, he saw that shot, and now it's all ABC. So, this is pretty huge to go 3 0 up. So, who actually broke this again? Was it Roth? Roth broke this one. And yeah, this will kill him a bit. Yeah. I did not see Kurt losing from here the way he's playing. He's not making hardly any mistakes. He's going to have a couple of breaks up his sleeve. <laughs> And the SA camp has gone quiet. Although, as I say that, they start lipping up. <laughs> you guys would have seen that. Rob's just decided, you know what, I'm going to spill this drink all over the floor. <laughs> He's called for the towel. <laughs> Much like when he's alone on a Saturday night. <laughs> uh, so he's decided, yeah, well, I'm going to finish that drink in case I'll spill a bit more. <laughs> That's it, now he's smiling. That might actually, that, that mistake might help him relax a bit. But he doesn't, look, he doesn't look stressed at all. I mean, he's missed that one ball, but other than that, he hasn't really done anything wrong. Played at a nice hot rack. <laughs> Roth just needs to smash this pack and open up the ball so it doesn't take three hours to finish. Well, we might see him. We might see him take the right hand side yellow and just crash into the pack and try and get some development. 
He doesn't really have any other options. Well, not very many people actually would, would, would do that, but at the end of the day, it's like having a break yourself. So you break you break the pack, and if the only problem is if the bike goes in, you that's, lose. That's the fear. But, you know, I'd, I'd probably break the pack here. You get a ball in, you go game. If, if you don't get a, you know, if you don't get a ball in, or it's it basically just having a break. So I'd, I'd probably, um, if I was Dave, I, I think he might there. actually be the only player in Australia that would play that shot. There's no way on earth well, see, I would Kurt, play that. I, I think between these two guys, look, Dave, is, Dave is a smart guy, but Kurt, obviously lately, has been, and over the last few years, has been playing obviously more eight ball than Dave, and tactically, you know, if it comes down to it, see, see Dave's probably now going to put this ball over the pocket, or if he takes one in the centre, but... If he puts a book bottom ball over the pocket, Kurt's pretty much just going to pot it straight away. So I wouldn't be potting any balls here if I was Dave. I'll tell you, he might even play this with the right hand side and swing past the yellows at the bottom of the pack. No, over the hole. See, if, I was, if I was Kurt now, I'd be just playing the yellow on the red. And See, but this, and but this is the thing. You do that, Mick, then you get two shots to hit the pack. Yeah. So, and then you get another shot after. So it's like having a break and then still playing if you don't pot a ball. So I'd, I'd still do it. I'd still do it. I think there's room underneath it, so I don't think he'll do it. Oh, he's just gone across. Well, that's not bad. So a lot of emotion being shown up at the, up the other end that we're not filming the Rob Taylor Invitational. I just found out the match I lost as well was to get into the last three, so very disappointed with my own achievements to not be able to participate in winning the inaugural Rob Taylor invitation which is more prestige than this event that we're currently watching right now I've been told <laughs> how about this Jamie you put the red over the pocket and and roll into the pack yeah, this time I probably would play that but I'd, I'd put the pressure straight back on Dave here. I'd pop the red and give him two when you're 3 nil up it's probably not the bad shot because Dave must must produce there's a lot of things that can go wrong, especially where that yellow is. Uh, you know, and, and now Dave, if he wants to, can open up the pack himself. Exactly so, right. Well, he's, he's got, got to make sure at least the, the yellow goes coming. over there, or the black. Well, you can't just open this pack up and that pocket in the bottom right corner actually doesn't mean anything to the outcome of potting out in the next shot. So he's got to actually get some kind of yellow or black over that corner pocket. Yeah, I did see that shot. I didn't like it. Well, actually, that's a pretty good shot. He's developed two or three reds. And, uh, not, not left Kurt really a simple well, out. The problem is like with that. Kurt's yellow, it's too far out of the pocket. He can sneak balls under there. With Dave's red, it's closer. From what do, we can do, see, you think, do you think he might chop this in the, uh, in the corner and go into the pack himself? No. Not, <laughs> not, not with Dave's red there. Well, I'm not sure. He's obviously played to miss that. He's just playing a safety. But this, this will allow Dave to open up the rest of his reds. He's basically forcing Dave now to continue opening the pack, or even forcing Dave to play the out. I think if he plays the top red of those three that are there, he can actually just plant it on the yellow and chuck it on the side rail. Not sure what he's there. There was a uh, yeah, that's what he's done, but he's actually hit it way too hard. So, th this okay. has got a fair bit left okay. in it. So the other issue now is the black sort of got itself in a position where it's tied up to both corner pockets as well. Uh, I, I even wouldn't be, um, I'd probably put this yellow, push it closer to the pocket and, and cover the hole. This one he's going for now, I'd probably just roll up to it. He's yeah. going into the pack here. He's, yeah. Maybe. Clip it thinner than not. No, I think he's found a plant, Mick. I think he's found a plant. There's no way he deliberately put that himself nothing. And I saw him lining it up earlier, I just didn't think it was there. Well, the thing is, he's relying on a lot here. 
When you look at it, it he can actually play this plant, screw off it into the red, clears the black, and he actually might be on the ball in the middle that's sitting on the own of the right. So it might be a fairly controllable shot. Unless the red goes under the, unless the black goes under the red, he's going to push the black to the cushion here. I think he's going to do what I said. He screwed under the. Oh, wow. Wow, oh jeez, why well, that is just an unbelievable result. I'm not sure exactly what cannon what there at the end. Well, he played the cannon. The but cannon he didn't actually cannon in, the so black or the white, did he? Yeah, he did. It was a big shot. The white off the yellow, played the cannon, and then the white hit, hit directly into the black. So, yeah, great shot. Do you think he's going to go all tropo and play the double? <laughs> I'd probably try and come down now. Oh, that's oh. a bad shot. So first real serious positional error from Kurt there. Even if he gets well, his black, out. Black sort of landed in a bit of a, a dodgy spot, so either player has to actually play a good black to win the frame here. So even Kurt makes this pot, he's still going to have trouble getting position, I think, on the other one. plays in the middle though he might be a chance but that's pretty thin. Yeah I think, I think he's aim, aiming for the corner here. Bouncing the wide off two maybe three rails. It looks like the middle mate. I think he's actually going to try and play in the middle and because I don't think he can get position playing the corner. Well he's trying to use some side. Wow. Wow that's very fortunate in fact. And he's actually left over nothing. <laughs> Joel Snooky on the ball over the pocket. <laughs> Incredible. So a bit of fortune there for the Dunham. Well, you've got to probably open up your reds here. Put a bit more pressure on Kurt. Yeah, I totally Maybe. agree. It's all about the white ball. Maybe even push a red over near the black. Maybe. Um, So I think the problem with trying to push the red near the black is you, so you you want to make sure you hit a cushion so it's really hard to yeah. get the red on the cushion. I mean that, yeah. <coughs> but you might be able to play the bottom of the three and just chop it over there and that way he can just let the white ball count in the bottom red. But then he'll leave it he'll leave a really simple opening yellow, so no, he's gonna play this bottom ball. Looks like he's just gonna play a containing shot instead. Shot by Dave. I did see that shot earlier and I just thought, well, you know, do you really want to risk giving Kurt this shot here? But you probably didn't have a hell of a lot more. I still think Kurt should have cleared that red about six, seven shots ago. Wouldn't be in, wouldn't have this problem. Yeah, if how do you put it? This frame will definitely be way, way different. Possibly even over already. This day and age, attacking the safety is pretty much the way to go. A lot of the time. Yeah, the players have got so good now though that potting a ball over the hole and giving two shots seems to just cost for a frame more often than not now. Watch he doesn't knock the black out here. Look at this shot. Look at this shot. He's been a little bit unlucky, but he did need some luck to land on it in a, pot a potable area, so good news, bad news for Kurt Dunham. All he wants to do now is make sure he doesn't foul. Just don't give Dave two shots, keep the pressure on. So he can come off the back back rail here and maybe push the yellow down towards the pocket. Yeah, I'm thinking that you actually come off a side cushion and try and chop it to the corner and the white ball will actually naturally get your position if you do get lucky enough to pot it. And then you keep the yellow down this end of the table as well. You know Peter Knight just went for a six oh, We've just missed out on something pretty funny, I didn't see it, but Peter Knight's just decided to fall over <laughs> for no reason at all. <laughs> now, now he's decided he wants to play the shot for him. Give me that. Some random SI guys decide he wants to check it as well. Oh. 
so I'm not sure what the... I don't think it's a total. So Kurt has to obviously play this a bit harder and make sure he hits the cushion. But you don't want to leave a, a gap for the black if the yellow does come across near the pocket. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult to get everything right, isn't it? The only outcome you really want is to pot it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you've just got to have a bit of a dip here. Well, it's and not... Oh, oh, well, he's actually he's actually lucky that the yellow stayed over the hole. Well, he got the yellow where I said, and the black doesn't pass. So, you know, a little bit of fortune there for, uh, for Kurt. Dave, there's still, still a bit of work here for Dave. Yeah, had that yellow have gone in, this would have been like two or three times easier to make the out. Well, the, the three reds in the middle of the table, um, they're all on. You, you, the one near the pink spot can go in the centre pocket to our left, where the black is, and then the other two are on automatically, so you don't need to cannon into them. You just need to land on them, which Dave's doing now. The other thing, though, if he plays this now, it's naturally just a stun for the corner of the yellows, right? <laughs> Which is now covered. Well, you're right about that. I forgot about that. But they do both will go in the middle. They so. both go in the middle too, yeah. So everything about that yellow is causing issues for a simple out here. Even the one along the bottom rail, you can just drop the ball in the pocket, slide along the rail. You can't even do that. So. So again, you know, still a bit of fortune for Kurt, but you know, when things are going your way and you're winning. It's, it's pretty much the way it, well, we're going to see it goes. we're going to see deep screw here, just to try and stand across to the area between black and yellow. Well, he'll try and land on the three balls here. He'll exactly. put the one over the pocket and drift across. But he well, he wants to hit the side rail here. Yeah, and then that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Use deep screw, but don't hit dead straight. Hit with angle. Well, he's under hit. Well, that is like no, he's that, hit it perfect. He's hit it, he's Would have liked right. to hit it a bit more though. Would have liked another foot on that, and then he's absolutely perfect. But Dave played it for an area there of three balls, and uh, he's on one. So he's, he's still looking alright here, Dave. Yeah, look, you can see from that angle there, like, he's got a heap of angle on this red. I don't think it's as awesome as it first looked. I think if he takes one in the centre, he might be able to screw off the other red to the left of it. He's actually looking to take this up the top, I think. I don't think he can put it up the top, can he? I think he's got to put in the middle and screw just before the centre pocket for side rail, and then he'll be okay. There you go. Yeah, he's got two options. One, he can pot the red and take the black out, which you'd do if you had one shot. Or you'd probably just leave it anyway, but he's got two shots, so I'd probably roll in both reds and then have a double on the black with two shots. Yeah, that's, that's the safest the, way. Yeah, it's the smartest way to go. But I still do believe you're right. You're still stun off this though. In between black and yellow again, stun off the side rail and just get yourself fairly straight on this red. And there it is. Yeah. I think he's actually maybe looking at screwing back and getting playing along. Just want to make sure you pot the red, give yourself two on the black. That's what he's doing. He's actually going to give himself a shot playing it long, just whether he can drift the white ball back out to the pink if spot. If he screws back and plays, if he, I think he's looking at playing the black up the, up the table. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. So this can go wrong if he doesn't play this well. Yeah, see, maybe being a nine ball player, you'd play these kind of shots more, but when you're playing two shot and eight ball, playing these shots up the rail like this with two shots is, is quite hard. Um, I think I think the shot really is the double to the top right hand corner. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives yourself so much I don't move the I don't even move the black here a foot. I actually wouldn't even bother trying to get it close yeah. to the pocket. Get it out. And just get behind Basically it. play straight into the black and get it out a foot and then you've on you're on in like two, three pockets. Well, he's gone all the way, and look at this, straight in. Now, the only problem the only problem with playing that shot like that, if it jawed, it could have went safe. Exactly and right. And it's actually, it's actually not a good shot what Dave played there. 
He had to play that pretty much at half the pace. Played it exactly the way he played it, but just play it to bring the white, to bring the black out in the middle of the table. And then you can use your second shot to pop the black. Yep, totally if, agree. Look like a hero though when he got it right, but yeah, yeah I agree well, with that. It's, it's all good and well when it goes in, but if it jawed and then went down a rail of six inches, he's, he'll, he'll think he's unlucky, which he's not. It's actually a bad shot. Yep. So I, I definitely would have done that with one shot, not two. But 3 1. Big frame. Fight in him. Big frame, big out. And uh, I think they're just quickly having a break just to freshen up. <laughs> Kurt's going to powder his nose. I go test the wireless suit. Can you tell when it when it cuts out? So I just keep talking as I'm walking. I'm just going to do a bit of a pan around the room and go for a walk with the mic and see how, how much distance I can get out of it. Go to the toilet, you reckon? Just going around the crowd, say good day to a few people. I'm broadcasting live. I've got Shrek here next to me. Yeah, we're still good. Yep. I'm, a, I'm probably about 20 metres away from the commentary booth. Yep. Just going to go for a walk up to the Rob, Tation, Rob Taylor Invitation, which is still in progress. And uh, getting to a 30 and 40 metres away now. We're still spot on. This is like Telstra 4G at its best. Just come over to the uh, Roy Noblet Paul Pike affair. This might be a final. And... Uh, I've just watched Roy Noble play a huge double against Paul Pike. Um, he's gone for a walk around the room to see how far this wireless mic can go. So, you know, he's about there. Ah, we've we've cut out. So I think I think maximum distance is around between 50 and 60 meters on these things. That's not bad. It almost covers a full pool room. Dave with a dry break here, and Kurt pretty much giving it straight back to uh, Dave. Just more of the technology that uh, Cubal TV is bringing. A touching ball. About Landing 50, 60 metres. Put a delicate shot here to make sure he touches the red and hits the cushion and doesn't push the white ball with his cue. I'm going to actually put in a request to Dan one day that we actually do a, a full, uncut, uncensored commentary so I can just tee off. We should have mics on the players as they play and you can hear them talking to, them, talking to themselves. <laughs> we might actually get uh, a cue cam one day. <laughs> Adults only keyboard TV. That's where Jojo and Tracy get their gear off and play pool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Shrek's offered to play the winner of that affair. Totally nude. Should lift the ratings. Mankini. So the Roth is what? Sorry, I've actually, when I went for a walk there to find out the range, I didn't see who was on what. No one's Russell, spotted anything Russell, yet. Oh, okay, so still in a little safety battle. Oh, oh yeah, two shots, obviously. Kurt, Kurt must have failed. Kurt must have failed. Kurt must have failed. 
Well, this out's actually not that hard now. Hit go. So as you can see now from the front on view, it's a little bit easy to see the availability of some of the other balls and uh, it's not too difficult, just obviously white ball control the key here for this out. As it is with most outs, but sometimes you have lots and lots of options to travel with the white, whereas a couple of these shots just need, because the ball will only go in one or two pockets, you've got to be pretty spot on with the white. Another thing to note too is uh, the two reds at the bottom right, it's very important that he actually gets rid of the red that's closest to the bottom right pocket Correct. early on so that way it makes the other one available later on in the out. A lot of people actually will miss that and they'll get themselves into trouble and leave themselves a plant and the plant goes wrong. Yeah, or they'll pop the bottom one and try and come back around for that red. Yes, and that's very difficult because you're dealing with traffic, you've got to have the right angle, all sorts of things can go wrong. Now, is he on it now? He might have run through a touch too far. That just must go... Yeah, oh, okay, it doesn't Dave. matter. This goes to the corner, you know, the one that he's just below. So even if this, if he's not on it now, he can actually just stun this in. He definitely will be on it afterwards. You can see it would be very hard to come back from 4-1 here. So 3-2 would, uh, would, definitely, would definitely be a lot better. Yeah, oh, that's for, perfect. Uh, Dave to make the comeback. That's perfect, Mick. All he's got to do now is just drop this in. And he's got the red that's in the middle of the, th of the four or the three that's surrounding it. Should we just roll through on this red here, towards in the centre? Yeah, that's what I'd do too, but he's decided he's just going to stun this and then play the one that's in the black. This isn't too bad though, come back. He's on, he's on both balls. Still not a bad, not a bad shot there. It's a bit hard to see, obviously, where we are. Yeah, I don't know, he just... This, going the way he's just going now is actually quite important. That's just what I'm saying, going the way he's just there, he's actually got to be more precise with the white. So I think we might see him screw back off the side rail here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll do. So he's made it look fairly simple now. So just a couple of... Nice clean pots. They'll all gonna. They'll all be stun, stun, stun pots. If I know Dave. I'm sure, Rod and Kath are at home watching, watching their son play in the final. You're surprised Very Kathy's not down here, actually, <laughs> Rod. Normally, normally pops her head and says g'day. Probably didn't think Kurt to go this far. She just thought that son of mine can't go a yard anymore. <laughs> well, guess what, Kathy? Your son's just started going a yard. All that money you wasted on him is finally starting to come to fruition. <laughs> So his own, his own state. <laughs> I'm putting him off pot in the black. Idiots. <laughs> oh, he nearly falls over. He does a nearly rerun Peter Knight's effort. Might be a bit slippery the floor. Well, that goes straight in though. Three two. It's game on. <laughs> Can't let that yeah. one slip. They're yelling out, "Feel the wrath." And uh, I think they mean the word wrath when they're just trying to be clever. These, I think we might do a few interviews after this. <laughs> I don't want to interview them now because all I'll hear is yelling and screaming and go and say, go to wrath. <laughs> Come on, jokers. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, they're allowed to cheer. That's what's all part of it. But uh, listen, guys, <laughs> if you actually do watch this, <laughs> you would have seen it, he's put the wrath off, so you might want to calm down just a touch. The game momentum's actually swung a little bit now, towards uh, the wrath. Yeah, look at the poo break, like as in, nothing wrong with the contact, but uh, just everything spread to one side and it's all clustered up. Well, I'd probably take yellows here, roll roll the yellow into the centre where his hand is pretty much now. And play then a double. Play, no, he'd play the other centre, play, sorry, play the other yellow in the centre and go into the red and the yellows that are dead. Is it on that easy, that yellow? I thought... Oh, yeah, my mistake, it's very close. So, 
wants to open up the game really quick right now. I don't know if he's gone far enough or he's playing a double. Yeah, well, I thought the double was the shot, but I wasn't really sure. I mean, the yellow will definitely go pretty easy, but I don't think from the angle he's on, I think he's actually got to double it. I think he's doubling it. Oh, it's missed. He's got fortunate with the white. Unless Kurt's on this ball in the middle. I don't think he is. He might have a chop down the rail, but that looks pretty tough. This angle here suggests maybe he can hit this red next to the black. If he can, he can move the yellow down near the pocket, but... If Kurt can get an opener here, he's actually favourite. Yeah, definitely. I think this is on. Got to still hit perfect. Does not want to flick the yellow in front of the red. And he's That's missed a good that. Shot. Good shot. Roth's first shot there, that yellow in the centre. I, I think he should have took a bit more time on it and come come forward a little bit more, you know? I, I think, unless he was playing the double all along, but... Yeah, I think even if he had to come through more, that chop in the middle was actually thinner than what it would have allowed okay. to get the cannon as well, so... Well, it, looked, it looked thick from here, but maybe, obviously, over there. What do you do? You roll this in? Well, down the rail? Yeah, well, you're definitely pointing out. I'd actually leave that one to last. The one down the rail is his last ball. Oh, yeah, that's the key to get to the black. But the black also goes pretty much, if you put the white ball where the red is in the middle of the table as well. So it'll go in the corner from there, so... I, I think the one that Kurt's about to play now, I'd probably leave it to last. Because if it sits over the pocket, he's got the pocket covered. Yeah, but I'd rather do that early. Yeah. Than that have it as your last ball. Drifting in. Yep. Nicely Kurt finishing here. Although, it sounds really stupid, but even the ball that's bottom left of all the reds is actually tricky. Because you've actually got to get low on it and pot it in the middle, or in the corners. Well, you can't actually play it in the pockets that would be most easy to get on with just, you know, little stun shots and stuff linking from other balls. It's been interesting what he does here. So this was obvious. This was the obvious shot. It rolls. He's going to be careful. It doesn't drift towards the pocket. Like oh, he's jawed himself. That's definitely jawed. That's that. That's a very dangerous shot. You play a ball like that, and it, and it can drift, no, drift I, I into the cushion. I think he should have played a little bit harder, though. A little bit harder. Like he had a, a lot of area to land in. He could have come up the table a foot and still would have mattered. Sure, if he's on it. I don't think he's on the one in the corner, but he's on the one in the middle. Oh, he's having a look. So middle it is. Jaw snooking on the one that he would have liked. I really don't see him potting this for some reason. I hope he does, but... I think he'll get it. Straight in. Good shot. Key That's shot good. coming up right now. This is the key shot. How would you come down with the white here, Jamie? You... Well, I was just going to say, I'd probably so stun off two gone. cushions. Stun off two cushions and land, land on this red here in such a way where you can actually get just, just off straight and run through past the yellow for the red in the middle. One cushion misses that. I think he's got too much angle, so we're probably going to see him stun off side rail and back across again and try and land middle table. Yeah, right where he is now. Yep, and he's just saying, this is where I want it. But the thing is, the black as well. That's why I think leaving that... Well, the black does go in the centre. But that's why I, I would have left that ball down the rail to last. You know, if you're at a position early, you can always run that red down the rail halfway through the out and sit it over the pocket. Yeah, that's true. So... Big shot here. He's not, not took the red. He's played that as well. Well, actually, that's... If this does go in the middle, like you said, that's not bad. He's looking at it. So. Yep, so it must go. I was going to say, if it doesn't go, the only other option is a double run-through. <laughs> and if it doesn't go... Well, even taking that first one down the rail was, was a silly option, but obviously, yeah, it must go. 
There we go. Here's an angle to tell us. I'm already knowing it does, by the way. He's playing the shot, but still, this will this will 100% confirm it. He's so he could not be fatter on this either. He's perfect. I'll tell you what, there was a bit of emotion there. He did it. He did a inside pump, fist pump there. Walked off with a. So one more frame for the Dunham. Well, Dave got the last two, so he, he stopped Dave's run there. So. Well, imagine the three all there, though, and that was a massive difference. Yeah, Four three. two, you feel like you got a bit of a buffer. Yeah. Probably because you have. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't tell he's breaking this because Roth never gets out of his chair until it is like he's about to I break it. Roth's break. So Peter Knight checks the rack without falling over this time. Good job. <laughs> Would really like a quick reply here. Oh, he's got. Oh, wow. Have a look at this for a break. Wow. I'm pretty sure everything that you could ask to go right has gone right there. And take yellows? Absolutely. Or red. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's just going to play this red that he's to the right that he's below and then run right through the bottom rail. No, I'd probably just stunt. I'd probably screw back to where it is. Actually, now. sorry, you're right because you can, you can get the gap, yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's a better shot for sure. Didn't see that initially. Could Actually, even he take, might even take, take it take now, yellow, yeah. yeah. He's got take, the perfect angle. Take the yellow near the pocket first and come back up and you've got your choice of three balls. If he, if he takes the yellow near the black spot, doesn't come back far enough, things can go wrong. Yep, I agree. So, yep. So, some reanalysis. <laughs> but he's actually going to... He's actually going to take this shot. I'd be interested if he actually runs through and does what I initially thought. No, he's stunning back. He's going to come back. Yes, he's come oh, back. he's oh, gone too far. Oh, that's, that's why I really think taking one over the pocket to begin with and then coming back up in the middle of the table. Yeah. You, you've got the choice on pretty much any ball. Yeah, I think if he goes back and watches it, he'll go, jeez, why didn't I put the ball over the hole? I don't think there was any danger of any cannoning reds or losing the white either. It's just natural. I don't know whether he can still hit this yellow now near the pocket, but... Well, he, he can still get on it from this shot. He, yeah, this is, he could play it now again if he wanted to. I'd, I'd be playing it now. You have to be playing it now. I mean, you, you're going to get the white ball back up to pretty much where it is now. Like, maybe a little bit more to the left of where it's sitting now, but natural angle will just take it back up the table to a pretty good spot. I don't know, maybe you can pot it last and swing around, but we'll come back out in the center. There's so much more white ball to be done with this, Mick. I, I really I agree. I think we should have been eliminating that ball earlier. Now, this, this is still tricky. No, I think this is all right. It's the same thing. He just hits it natural, just a little bit harder than what he would have before, and he's going to land on a pretty good shot. Well, he does look straight on these cameras. Quite straight, but... Yeah, I think he's perfect for, for leaving at last. If he doesn't come far enough for he overruns or he cannons a red, there's so many things that can go wrong here. Yes, my he, he, he played that well, but he's, it, this, is, this is still a missile, in a way. I mean, he just had a pretty much the same angle as what he had at the start of the frame then, and yeah. look where the white balls landed. It would have been on all three yeah, balls, and it would have been so much easier. Probably due to not playing too, a lot of two-shot or eight ball, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, some of his routes are definitely different from his nine ball and ten ball play on the different tables. But Here he is in a final, so good luck to he's him. He's obviously doing all the right things still. Just you can see where he is right now. There's a good camera angle where he's on the black. If you're taking that one out of the pocket, it'll come out like, like what you said. I think you're potting so, Mick. Nice. Yeah! I thought... I thought he'd miss that. 4-3. Uh, yeah, it did, it did look like for a second, my jaw, but it snuck in. 
It's something Dave does do well though, is fight. Yep. No matter how far he's down, he's, he's very he's composed. A fighter. Doesn't doesn't give up. And he has decided that he's going to do a bend in and toilet break. After winning a frame. So Kurt can't be upset about that. I mean, it's not like he actually did anything wrong in the frame. It was a monster break from Roth. And Kurt would have actually been thinking a couple of times. I'm sure Kurt would have been thinking, oh, he popped the ball over the hole here first. And when he kept leaving it, Kurt was probably sitting there thinking, I might get a shot, I might get a shot. Well, if I was in Kurt's position, I'd be happy with him leaving that ball to last. Yeah, absolutely. Because as you saw, he didn't, he didn't land perfect on it. Okay. What are we commentating on? The rack. Kurt is making sure that he gets a rack the same as what, <laughs> same as what uh, the Roth just had. No stitch ups. For like the last. This is why. This is actually why Kurt's checking his rack because his last break. If you remember, there was a big pack. So he's happy. And you just wait for the Roth to get back. And, Possibly uh, three frames left in this final. Kurt's hoping it's just one. I think, yeah, Kurt's break now. Dave's come back from his, uh, come on, his break. Kurt's hoping for a massive split here. Just watch the inner. Yeah, he dumped the white the first row. They just didn't split again, did they? That's right. You did get a ball on him, see that. Oh, to be fair, to be fair, uh, I, yeah, the impact that he had with the killing wasn't perfect on that break. It was just a little bit wayward. But yeah, he's got a ball. A bit dull. Maybe. I mean, he just he just didn't cue that like Jamie Stevens does, where they just go everywhere and all over the holes and I pot a ball and go game. You know what I'm saying? No, of course you don't, because that doesn't happen. That's the problem, mate. That's the problem. So Kurt Dunham decided I'm going to take reds and this is a, isn't small. This shot it looks easy, but it's actually not. Plays it well. Even now, that's still not straightforward. I wonder if Kurt can actually pot the one in the centre and even come down the table and back up into the yellows and the reds. Yeah, I'd actually be happy Cannon and the yellow full ball yeah. that's to the left of the black. And just clearing it, and the black will go no, in the I'm middle. I'm talking about where he's aiming now, if we can, with his hair's in the way. But coming off the... Yeah, back cushion into back the yellow. Into the yellow. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm talking yeah. about the yellows near the reds, in the middle of the table. Oh, I see. Well, I don't think that needs to happen because the, the red goes in the middle already and he'll just naturally develop the other red. I think the concern is the black at the moment. Might be coming around. Oh, oh, wow. That's a... Well, you know what? He actually played that plain ball and part of the outright, so... I think he did try and come up, though, into the yellows and the reds. actually get to this bottom yellow, can he? I reckon he can pot it, mate. I th yeah, I think he can definitely pot this bottom yellow. And he's just about to prove that. No, he didn't. Yeah, he's been a bit stiff, there. Special, special comments from uh, Ben Tyne, I suggest he's had to swerve that. I think I think Ben Tonai needs to get off the gear. <laughs> Obviously. Well, he's still got two shots now, so possibly even play the yellow near the black and stun across. Yeah, 
Well, he's decided he's going to develop these now and stun in, and stun in them at the same time and develop everything. Oh, he's popped the red as well. That is so unfortunate. It has. I think that will cost him the match. But to be fair, I mean, that there was no random cannons and stuff. That was a natural double, so he possibly didn't see that. But those, the thing was, those two yellows are on. They're on in the top corner. He didn't need to promote I actually, them. I actually think the shot he played was fine. He's just, you know, he's just pot the red. Well, if he doesn't pot the red, he's, he's looking absolute moral to win. Kurt has to take his time um, out. What, what he didn't do, though, was to check that that double was on. Got to be loving this. 4-3 up. Two shots. Oh. He hasn't missed, hasn't missed that all day. It's only on the hill, two shots. I'll just waste one. I think, I think Kurt, I think Kurt will finish you. Yeah, I think he will too. This is this is what he's been doing now at nationals. This is what he's done all day today, and now, now's the time. Now's that time, and I think ball in the middle, ball in the corner. No, I think the one he's on, he's on the one straight right now, what he's looking at. I didn't think this is on. Okay, maybe you're not. You might see a little bit more movement in Kurt at the moment. The last couple of balls, let's watch Kurt. He might move forward a little bit as he's killing the ball, as, as he strikes a ball. So we just confirmed that the reason that Kurt did deny that pot on the red to the left is it's only half a pocket there, it makes it missable. Now this, this is not as easy as it looks, especially when you're out of the pump. But he, he's going to stun the blue spot here and give himself options. He's got, I reckon he's gone not quite as low as he wanted. I think I think he could just dribble this in, just drop, like play a soft, uh, soft drag. With a, with a touch of left hand side <laughs> to kick it in. At the end of the day, even if he's got a, a thinner cut on the uh, red in the corner, he's still going to be on the black for the same pocket, so it's very difficult to tell how thin this is from here. I reckon it's that bad. I think you can just well, he's soft screw it, it in. So I don't think soft it's too screw. Oh, yeah, look at this. This just gives us a better option, so he's maybe a soft screw or a st stun into the yellow. I think he's going to screw it into yeah, the yellow. Like he's going to belt it. And he did help hit it hard, and he's actually used the wrong oh side. <sighs> he needed the opposite side to what he's hit it with to avoid yellow. I'm not sure with, with Kurt's body language there. I'm, I don't think he's on the red in the center. He's definitely not on it. No way. Maybe chop it at the corner. He's probably going to probably have to go to glory here and take the red at the top. Don't worry about the white. Just make sure with the pot. You don't get the pot, doesn't matter where the white goes anyway. As long as it doesn't go in off. <coughs> this would be massive. Yeah, he's not, he hasn't got a lot of room at all. He's got to hit this spot on. Possibly might not be able to even pot it. We might, we may, we may see him overcut this. Not 100% sure he could see quite enough of it. He's actually got a he's actually got a good lead. Got a good wide, but Ruffles just gonna he's just gonna nestle in, bump this ball off the rail, and he'll just get himself an easy sneaker. No, I don't like that. I, I think Kurt Kurt can possibly I don't know actually Kurt might be able to get out of the sneaker quite easily off the bottom rail. I think Dave, Dave might play the ball in the center and actually go out here. He might, but I think it's a big shot. So I think you'll see he'll play a snooker. Unless the bottom, the, the yellow near the black is on, or he's just going to push it closer to the rail and lay the snooker. He's gone this way. Well, he's actually played a better snooker. That is a better snooker. But the thing is, he's, he's kind of tied up those balls for the corner, so... This is tough to get out of. The thing is, though, if, if Kurt does hit this red now, I think Dave's in trouble. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's sort of tied him up for the corner, so... 
don't know if you can actually like uh, jack up before the centre pocket with bottom and straighten up the white off the side row. That's maybe a triple off two cushions. Kurt's trying to maybe swerve around the black, hitting the cushion near the bulk line, and then obviously trying Make to hit the, the red or pot the red. But he's going to he's going to try and try to swerve. Well, this is a big swerve coming up. The only problem with this, with this, he can actually go in off. Yeah, he hasn't got it. No, he just picks up the uh, hole that he put in the table from the swerve. So I think maybe he maybe should have went the other way, the left hand cushion off the back cushion, and then just touching up, touching the red, yeah. making sure he gets close to the red. And, and touching it, even if he doesn't touch it, leave, leave it Dave along a, a, a long, a long opening shot. Now, if, if Roth is actually on his bottom of the four yellows, this is an absolute moral for an out. But if he's got to play the ball in the middle and travel a bit, then there is a small glimmer of hope left for Curtis Dave, Dave. Dave can even just nick off the two now, open them up, and use his second shot to, to roll the balls in. Yeah, he that's doesn't actually have well. to play anything big right now. Just yeah. open up the ball. Isn't that amazing, Mikael? Earlier on the frame, I suggested that, and you said, "Hey, no, well, I wouldn't play that." And now you're telling. Now you want to play that shot. That exact and shot. I didn't see yeah. it. <laughs> That's why there's two of us. So it might turn to miss the obvious. And uh, now Dave's in prime position here. Yeah. And I'll tell you something right now. If Kurt does lose this match from here, he is going to absolutely kick himself having two shots with an easy set up. Strange things have happened. <laughs> and being for all, I think. I think Dave would definitely be feeling the better out of the tour. Yeah, definitely. He's come from 4-2 down. And I think it's his break as well. Dave's break. Good shot. Good shot. Come on, Roth. Come on. So they start to get loud again. They know that Roth is looking the goods. I think the way these both these guys have actually played in the last couple of matches. I think, I think it does deserve a 4 all. I don't think Kurt's going to be thinking that after what just no, happened. No. <laughs> well, what it's do you think here? Uh, do you the think crowd. the run through or do you think screw off the side rail? It's hard to tell with the angle. Looks top, like he's got a, a bit of top left. So Ross uh, just towed off the queue, make sure there's no stickiness going on, and down for a four all black. So all this mucking around for a four all, we could have just played a one frame and Mick. But then we wouldn't have witnessed the tension car excitement that's been brought to us in the last eight frames. Kurt's going to have a bit of a break. No. It's Ross' break. And they shake hands, say, don't have too much good luck in this last frame. And I'm tipping Ross is going to want a break similar to what he did last break. And Kurt is not going to be wanting that. a bit like watching the Dahl or Federer play. Not even sure why he actually has a glass when he's got a <laughs> bottle of water. Why not just drink it out? He must have a plastic phobia on his lips or something. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Bova makes the comment, weird unit, Dave Rothel, but can play pool. Here we go. Race to one. So, and you actually notice his feet when he breaks. You get a good shot of it here. They're very, like, side-on-ish and he sort of has a nine ball style break. And he'll he'll flow through it. Well, actually, he's sort of pulled up a bit on that one. That As a result, no ball. He did pull up off that break, I thought. I think Reg of the balls here. Yeah. Didn't see the cue follow right through there. He kind of pulled up and 
Yeah, reds are definitely the balls. There's two horrible balls on the side rail there on the yellows. Kurt's okay, still got a, a, quite a tough opening because he has to play the red quite, quite hard. Not hard, but a, a medium pace to get out for the other red. Yeah, just like the Adam Sandler song, at a medium pace. He's, uh, you're right, this has got to be a good shot. Tell you what, that right there, Mick, is another potential match winner because if he doesn't get that, he probably is going to lose. So it's all in the Dunham's hands right now. Can he hold himself together for seven more pots? Great shot there of the queuing action to Kurt Dunham. In that goes. That, oh, that's not good. We might have got away with that. He's kicked that red on because it wasn't on before. Kurt just puts his hand up, says, "Sorry, I think he might have nudged that red on, Jamie." I think you're right. And if he has, it's made the out a lot easier. Yeah, than it absolutely. Was I thought that was really bad to begin with, but even if it's, Ooh, it I think it is on. on. Yeah, it's absolutely, it passes. Yep, passes so quite easily. Bit of fortune there. I think he's under hit that a little bit. He would have liked to have been off the cushion. I think he's worried about being too straight on the one in the centre. Well, I didn't really see the issue, Mick, with uh, stunning off two cushions, off back cushion as well, just giving yourself a touch angle and being able to stun out centre table again. But uh, as long as he isn't dead straight and he can come off the side rail, he should be alright. Well, he is straight, he's got to jack up. Played it beautifully. That's a great shot. He's back in prime position now. Yeah, surely, Mick, you don't stun this. You run through for the ball in the middle. That's it. This is a natural run in there. Or you could possibly just run through for the ball at the bottom of the table. You come, you come off the cushion at the bottom and then back out for the red. Yeah. Because if you play it your way and play coming in the centre, you might not come far enough. Like that. Is that exactly what you said, Mick? Well, I'll tell you what, he might actually have to have another look at this as well. He might have a bit of angle. Well, I, think, I think he can soft screw it in and hold the white pretty well. This is a good shot of it here. You can see scratching there's a bit of angle. He's scratching his head here a bit. He's, um, I don't think he's come out far enough. Yeah, this is, this is tricky in that first thought, for sure. This might be the time to play for a double mick. It's hard to see from where we are. Either that or you're going to get high up. Uh, and I'm pointing at the screen for the first time ever. Get high up where, pretty much where he's just lining up now. That's where he wants the white. And then he can just put this in and play the black in the same pocket. I think if, if he can roll this red in and, and leave himself a shot on the other red in the centre pocket, I think he should do that. If he's trying to come up, pot this and stunt up the table and land where that yellow is at the top, he's, he's, he's asking for trouble. He's not going to give himself a chance. Oh, I'm not sure what he's doing here. Well, he's done it again. Come on, mate. Come on. I think you're right, mate. That was definitely not the right shot. No. Like, even if you're going like, to get up the table, you're better off using the side and push with left hand I'd side. I'd have a hard shot in, in the centre than, than being fat on the I'm bed. not sure that he could actually really give himself that, like, roll it in for a half, like, to hold the white ball off the side, cushion back for the black yeah. in the other pocket. So. I, I'm, I'm fine with him playing up the table, but you've got to. I think he's got to play off the cushion left hand side so he can widen the angle and take away any chance of canning a ball. He made the distance. Shot, yes. It may well, look like a good snooker now, but Dave's actually know. got an easy. Yeah, easy, he's uh, just yeah. going to hit one of the balls on the side rail and put Kurt Ryan back in trouble. Pete said no total, so yeah, thank you. this has actually made um, wow. the snooker a little bit harder. How is that not a title? <laughs> Camera says there's no way it can't be a title. Come on, Tay! <laughs> Jamie, you know what? You want to go have a look? I'm going to have to have a quick look. I think I think you can get through that. I'm just going to wander out there a little bit if they can sneak out. Yeah. I'll 
I'll tell you what, I can't have a quick reaction. Looks to me like it might be a total, so I'm not the greatest judge on the planet, but it looked like a total to me. Uh, yeah, get this guy out, out of the arena immediately. I think maybe we might want to get Ben Noonan out there to make this call. He should have been umpiring anyway, so... Just have... Nick, I had a quick look at that, and like I wasn't right behind. I couldn't get right at the table because obviously I don't want to get in the way of the play. But I thought it was a total. So no, you need to be getting someone neutral here. I don't, don't think you want to be getting a blow from SA. Oh, I'm really shocked it's called no total there, I really am. Okay, I didn't think he could, but I didn't have a I didn't have a great view of it, but look I actually I hope he actually hits the If he's gonna hit the yell, I hope he doesn't do it in such a way where he does fail, that would really be gay. Well, it didn't matter in the end. Played it well. So he's just put Kurt straight back in trouble with that shot, as we sort of thought he might early if he hit it. So now Kurt, two cushions. No matter how you look at this frame, Mick, he's in all sorts of trouble. And, uh, yeah, well, I did take a look at look at look at it, and uh, I don't think it was a total. You, you could get through. So, Dave's played a good safety. Okay, and there's play another one. Two cushion. Even when he hits it, if he hits it, he's still going to be in all sorts of trouble. So, a little bit of rubbish going on over here. He hasn't made it. And for the first time in the whole final, the room was completely silent because everybody knew the importance of that shot. And I think Ruff has a foul snooker as well. And he's already said it. Give me, he said, give me that wide pull. I want to do what I want to do with it. And, uh, we'll be seeing him pop the ball out of the pocket first. And then start working his way down the table, getting some position on some trickier balls. So it's, it's still... It's still a little bit tricky. Dave's got obviously a few yellows in the middle of the table and a dead ball on the cushion. <coughs> I just think Kurt's let this one slip, mate. Just a couple of cannons that uh, haven't worked out or he hasn't it's meant to do. Not over just yet. If Dave can screw back a foot, he might be able to play the one in the centre and then come into the into the pack. He's played that well. Now yeah, it's sort of like a like a snooker. Play the blue and then come into the reds. Yeah, I, I've got a, I don't even. That yellow at the bottom of the three looks like it's on in the corner, so why would you even bother canning them? Like, that just opens up the other two to the middle, so I don't think you need to actually move these at all. I'll probably still just run into it, but he's still, he's still on the one in the centre. Yeah, I, on one I, th the three I think I'd rather stun off this to the left-hand side of the table, and then you've just got so many options for the ball in the corner. Like, you're just going to go into the other yellows. Yeah. Well, he's probably taking your option. For the first time ever. He doesn't like it. It's too much angle, maybe. He, I, reckon he, I reckon he did that just, just to get up, mate. He said, I don't care about winning this final. I'm just going to make sure Jamie Stevens is wrong. Oh, that's rubbish. Of course, he knew what he was doing. But he would have liked slightly more contact. What would you do here? Would you nick the one out off the rail on the right-hand side of the table and then come back around to where he is now? Play the yellow in the centre. Freeing up his dead ball, wasting the shot. I think trying um, to keep his two. I think the yellow near the black. If he rolls the yellow in the centre, he can hold on the black for the other yellow. Yeah, I like this the shot. I like the shot. The opposite. Just got to roll this in. Just 
played that well. Now, now if he if, if he's not on the ball, but I believe he is, he could play your shot, Mick. But yeah, as you can see from that angle, he's definitely on the uh, yellow in the middle. Peter O'Keefe has absolutely got no idea what silent is on a mobile phone. And he's just decided to call me an idiot. <laughs> he's quickly whacked it on silent though, he's all good now. I'll tell you what, I'm really starting to feel it for Kurt now. That's a metal pumping too out of that phone. I'll tell you what, Mick, that couldn't have worked any better because he, he, he bangs his in and the other one goes to the corner, he stuns off the other ball in the middle and it's uh, it's it's good night, Irene. I think uh, I feel bad for you, I really do. I really want to see him win a major. And he's playing so well, just a couple of errors towards the end of that match. But not over yet, but not looking good. How straight this is. He is, he is just a solid unit, but off he does not miss many balls. Now, I bet you, I, I think if Dave does does go on the win this, you will see Dave fist pumping and doing a bit of yelling and screaming. Yeah, I don't think he will. I think he'll be pretty calm because he'll be a gentleman to Kurt. I really oh, I don't mean that. any disrespect, I think, as in for himself. Um, it's actually you know, quite a big thing. I think I think you're more win. likely to see a bunch of SA lunatics run out in the middle of the pool table and start mounting him. It's not over yet. <laughs> I think you are. Uh, there's two ways you can play. Mm -hmm. Stun, stun off the side rail, or, yeah. or even just play it soft and come in too. I'd, I'd stun. Yeah, I would too. I think he's going to run through. Oh, well, he's oh, actually, yeah. he's actually soft, screw, soft yeah. stun. That, 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 that was a shot. If uh, look, I'm, that looked really easy that shot but it's actually not as easy a shot as it looks to play that shot to play a little delicate stun like that especially when you're under the pump but, uh, confirmation now Mick it's definitely going to be over his don't forget guys he does have two shots on this black as well so can't seem like going wrong on this except if you get struck by light so congratulations to Dave Rothel who beats Kurt Dunham in the final 5-4 been an excellent tournament, some great pool being played, and uh, thanks to everybody that's organised, special thanks to Dan for setting up here, he's put in a lot of work, special thanks to the organisers, to Mick and Kev for sitting down and talking some talking some pool with me and some other side of rubbish, and uh, you can have a bit of a look at everyone go out there and congratulate the relevant parties involved in that final. In all fairness, um, you know, Kurt should all said, I did well, played well, and this is only taste of things to come. Absolutely, and I think that might even be the first time that he's knocked off Benny in a tournament too, so that's um, that's huge. Benny's never easy to beat no matter who you play, who you are, so uh, yeah, I'm, uh, he's close. He's real close. <laughs> and to Dave Rothel, well, mate, you're a class act, you're a superstar player, and uh, I'm sure you're going to win more tournaments as well, so congratulations to everyone Two majors involved. in two weeks. Yeah, 10 ball title as well. I know there's not as many runners in that, but still there were some superstar players in that field as well. So, well uh, done to Dave Rothel, and well done, but bad luck to uh, Kurt. So until next time, I think we'll see you guys at the, unless there's something else, eight ball related before, and then I'm not sure about, the Anzac Big Guns tournament will be when I next poke me into a microphone most likely. So up until then, enjoy, and uh, yeah, watch everybody hugging each other.
internet. Hopefully we can get to see you this Sunday. Yeah. Um, also, I want to especially thank um, Grant and Aaron for uh, backing me to come here. Yeah, no, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> um, and all you, all you guys who stay around for the final, thank you very much for watching. Thanks. Okay. Well, I think the last few years ago, we have a habit of uh, entering the last, I think, big judge ended up five last year with the, uh, the winner. I just call uh, Ray Wickham to uh, come out to the front, please.
and Bronstock. JR um, supplies all the tables and he assisted with the goal cover last night, so thanks to JR. Good to see you got a table this year. Good to see you got a table this year. Good to see you got a table this year. Um, to all the other starters and first timers, thanks for coming. You've, got a long, you've travelled a long way. Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania, um, you know, airfares, accommodation, everything. I just hope you've had a fantastic weekend and I'd love to see you back again next year. So thanks very much. Uh, Coupon TV to Dan and his crew over there, the Big Kev. Yeah, thanks to Jamie and Kevin. What's your name, Jamie? Jamie Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, the last, the last eight or whatever, last four, last eight, and um, it's just, just a fantastic thing that he, that he provides to all the all players around Australia. Thanks very much.